consultant. Firstly, Harriet, what would you normally be doing with Portastic Gun Dog Adventures? That sounds super exciting if it wasn't for <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> yeah, I would be uh, walking my clients' dogs, which I'm really missing at the moment. Uh, and is it only gun dogs you specialise in? Um, uh, no, not really. Um, obviously, that, that's, that's what I love. I love Labradors. I've got a, um, I've got a shepherd, or my, um, which is half lab and half German shepherd. And um, I just oh. love labs. I love um, all the working gun dog stuff. And, but yeah, no, I, um, I will walk anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, for dog owners working from home, there's so much to think about, isn't there, at the moment? Because juggling working from home, juggling that concentration time, and then also yeah. having a hyper dog, particularly if it is like a working dog, like you say. What can yeah. dog owners do to keep both the dogs and themselves from going bonkers? <laughs> Well, um, what I am tending to do is uh, scatter feed. Um, so you can go in the garden and just scatter their, their breakfast or their dinner just, uh, you know, in the garden. Um, or you can use Kongs um, or you can use um, treat dispensers. And I've pretty much done this with my dog since, since he was a puppy. And you can even get the Kong and stick it in the freezer. Oh, and that that just makes it a lot more um, interesting and a lot more harder for him. Um, um, also, you can put the food in Tupperware containers and just place it around your home so they can go searching. So this is good for, like, Spaniels and, um, and Labradors who obviously love the food. They give them things to do. And do you reward them when they find it? Do you let them have the food? Well, obviously, it's a good um, verbal, yeah, yeah, you let them have the food and, and you sort of say, good boy, good boy. But to be honest, rewarding itself for finding it is, is, is to get the food, really. And it just makes it much more interesting. Um, I just, I never feed my dogs in a bowl. Um, you know, it just makes it so much interesting. And obviously, it, it breaks up their day as well. So obviously, when you're at home, um, you know, you've got all this food and you can even use that for training as well, the food. That's so interesting. Do you know what, Harry? I never thought of... I've had dogs all my life. I've never thought of scattering food around the garden because that will kind of bring out their natural foraging and scavenging yep, instincts. Yep, yep, exactly. And also, if you've got, like, a barking dog as well, that sniffing to get the food is really calming. Um, again, high-energy dog, and, like, Daniel's are great, you know, because that, they, they've always got their nose to the floor. And, yeah, it's very, very calming and, yeah... It's, um, I recommend it to my clients, and I didn't know about it. I used to, you know, feed um, my parents used to feed their dogs in a bowl, you know, in a bowl, and you know, I've gone on this whole dog training experience when I got my dog. Um, so, I guess it's yeah, not natural, so is I, I it, for know. dogs to just be sedentary, standing in one position, eating from one place. Yeah, and also, if you've got a dog as well that um, just, just scoffs their food, like especially with Labradors, they do mm. scoff. I mean, mine, if I, if, I didn't, <laughs> if, I didn't, <laughs> if I didn't use a Kong, he would just scoff it. So, obviously, um, sort of breaking it up as well just gives them time to, to digest it and they're not, you know, being sick later on. And I don't know what's changed for my little chihuahua. You wouldn't think of a chihuahua as being a scoffer, but all of a sudden, he is now scoffing his dinner and trying to scoff our Labrador's dinner as well. Oh, so he's kind of become a bit of a secret food fiend in lockdown. So actually, I think we need to send him <laughs> off scavenging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gives me that all you can have, like, lick mats as well. They're, they're becoming quite popular now. And you just, you just get a bit of their food and then just sort of um, pop it on the, the lick mat and then they just spend all day. Great for, for your chihuahua as well. Um, a lick mat? I've never heard a of lick this. Mat. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I mean, um, I mean, I I was like this anyway, but I get my like off Amazon and stuff or anything like that. Um, you know, you can get just a lick mat and then just put food on and then they just spend all day just licking it off, just giving something to do. And would anyone say it at all that it would encourage dogs to beg for food and, and sort of scrounge for food when the owners are eating if you're kind of if you're scattering food around the house and the garden? Um, not not really, because I think once once they kind of get into that um once that once you get into that vibe, um, you know, what I tend to do, I'm doing whistle training at the moment with my dog. Um mm. And this is really good as well. So when I feed him, I tell him to... So I put it in the puzzle. So I've got, like, a puzzle. Um, and I, I get him to wait. And I put the food down. And then I get... I blow the whistle. And it, it just gives him that, that release cue to actually eat his food. So, you, so 
So, and it just gives him self-control as well. So being a gun dog, it's really, really important. And when you are bored at home, you can do these things with, with your dog. You've got the time to do that. Mm. Um, so with, with, with whistle training, you do that. So then they initiate the whistle with, with getting the, the food. So obviously you start off that. And then when we get to the park, um, when we eventually can go out for proper walks, um, we, can, we can do that whistle training more effectively. So it's just whistle and then they come back. That's a great idea. You know, instead of the time that you would have spent on your morning commute, maybe spend the extra time training your dog, trick yeah. training, whistle training. Yeah, like uh, whistle tra- I'm I'm really big um, in recall. Recall's like my um, specialised thing. Um, so I, uh, I I love I love talking to owners about um, about whistle training and recall. And um, I'm actually writing a book about it. Um, it's just so important just to get that right, and especially now, especially the situation that we've got. Um, we don't want our dogs running up to just anyone because obviously mm. um, they could have the virus on their fur. Or, you know, and that's really important that your dog stays with you, just for safety as well. Um, Ooh, that's, some brilliant that's... ideas there. Thank you, Harriet. Let's also bring yeah. in Rachel. Rachel, you've been getting really creative, making videos with activities to do with your dog in your home, posting them out to inspire dog owners. When was the moment you decided to, to start filming in lockdown? I actually started the week before. So I'm on video 19 today, so I'm doing one every day. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, so the videos that I'm doing are exactly like Harriet's been talking about before, enrichment activities for dogs. So as much as it's great that we're at home, for some of them it's a bit stressful because it's such a big change to what they're used to. And doing the enrichment activities can really improve their quality of life and lower that stress. And from a kind of human perspective, it gives you something to do with your day to take up some of that time to rummage through your recycling bin and find something to make for your dogs. I love that. I love that it can be as spontaneous as searching through the garbage or your recycling as to what you've already got. Yeah, so my thought when I started doing what I've called virus variety videos were that not everybody will have all those lovely things Harriet mentioned, like an actual Kong or a licky mat. And you might not be able to order them now. You might not be able to get them delivered, all of those things. So I've been trying to make up some homemade alternatives. So, for example, the licky mat Harriet mentioned, I used the ice cube tray from the freezer. So it's kind of like a plastic bit with all the dints in where you'd normally fill it with water and just smeared their food in that instead. Ah, okay. Um, It's really interesting, this way of feeding. I've never thought, as a dog owner myself, of feeding my dog in any other way than having a bowl, the classic traditional dog bowl. Yeah, and I think it's so... Because that's what we've all known, isn't it? You feed your dog out the bowl, probably same time every day, same food every day, so they don't get an upset stomach. It's really easy to just get into that habit. But they've, at the minute, especially if we get to the stage where they can't be walked, they've got so little choice on what they can do in their day-to-day life. So giving them, even just like their towel that you dry them with when they've been a bit wet and muddy on a walk and twisting that round so it's got some ridges in it and hiding their kibble or their biscuits in those ridges is such an easy way of just giving them something to do with their nose, sniffing out those treats and taking up some of their time for the afternoon. And I saw some of your videos with you getting the recycling out and making hurdles and jumps Uh, in your house. I love this idea. The toilet rolls that everyone seems to have been hoarding. uh, So that's where they've been going. What we call the level up challenge. (laughs) So you start with one row of toilet rolls and see if you can get them to jump over that. I've got very small dogs, um, and they didn't get over very many toilet rolls. It has to be said. I think we were about four high before my two started knocking them over, but it was really good fun. Oh, it's a brilliant idea. I remember being a child and every day I would rejoice in making agility jumps for them in the garden, you know, of anything I could find. Wheelbarrows, I'm lucky enough to live on a small holding, so we've got lots of different things, you know, bits of discarded wood and wheelbarrows and buckets and anything I could find. I think even that I had an old plastic seesaw that made the perfect agility jump for my Border Collie and my Labrador, who just love to pop a jump over anything. And I would make little courses every day and change it up. And, and I can just imagine now children who own dogs having nothing to do in isolation and spending that quality time with their own dogs exactly i mean the one i did yesterday with my dogs was actually playing noughts and crosses with them 
Oh. So I drew the knots and crosses grid and put treats in each square and then let them pick one and that's where their turn would have gone. I did win. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be said. But I had to turn the paper brilliant. in order to beat my dog because he was definitely going to beat me at knots and crosses. That is, oh, I love it. I just, I think agility is so much fun, not just for the dogs, but for the owners as well. It's such a bonding activity, isn't it? And when your dog jumps a new height or, you know, a new course, you just feel so proud of them and it really kind of gels your relationship. Yeah, definitely. One of the ones that we did this week was what I've called the Tupperware Challenge and just turning a Tupperware over with one treat in. And I've had over 60 dogs have done that now and submitted the time that it took for their dog to get the treat out from the under oh, the Tupperware. Wow. And it's amazing to see the difference. Like some of the dogs have done it in two seconds and some of the dogs are five minutes in and just sat looking at their owners asking for help and they're happy oh. to be given the treat in the end because they can't work out what to do. So it is oh. really, it's really interesting seeing all the different responses from the dogs on how they tackle the different puzzles. Yeah, because the different breeds are so different, aren't they? Yeah, even my two. I mean, they're both little crossbreeds, but one will use his nose, the other uses her paw to get things out. Harriet, for working dogs, one walk a day isn't enough. And we've heard so much, haven't we, about us all making sure we get our one daily walk and our dogs do as well. Mm -hmm. And I know that from owning a Border Collie that they are just hyperactive 24-7 and they won't yep. calm down even after a walk. What can you advise for people who have got a hyperactive working dog who want to be able to get on with their studying or get on with their working from home, but they've done their daily walk and they're like, now what? What do I do? Uh, the best thing to do is to sort of spend sort of about 10, 15 minutes, just say you like with two tennis balls and just keep throwing and they bring it back and keep doing that. Or if, you're, if your dogs are with terriers, they love the tuggy toy and just do that. And then with the tuggy toy, make sure you give it back to them because that's their reward if they keep getting it back. And then doing that and then giving them a chew after. When you want to start your work or whatever, just give them the chew and then they go off and say bed and they'll go and then they relax because it's important as well to teach them to settle. Yeah, that, that can be the problem, can't it? Because when you are doing such amazing, stimulating games like you both suggested, agility, games, you know, hunter-gathering food, long walks... Then there's a, a case where you've given your dog so much attention, a bit like a child. Yeah. They then want it all the time, don't they? Yeah, they, they do. I think you have to, you know, be a bit, right, I'm just going to sort of play with you for 15 minutes. Or what you could do, just mix it around. You could, I do a lot of, like, um, release cues with my dog as well. So, like, I put a treat out and and he just, I get him to sit and then I, I leave it there and he has to look at me. And the, you can see the mental energy he's using in just, have him focus on me and then I say to him uh, okay you can have it and that that is a really good uh, game you can play like mousy mousy as well so you can put the the tree on on the on the floor and then if they don't go towards it then you can just flick it and and that that tires them out I mean by the end he's calm and he's just knackered by the end so so it's totally making sure you get the kind of the mental activities in as well yeah. as the physical yeah, because um, so 15 minutes of mental exercise is, is the equivalent to an hour of physical energy. But for for the last little bit before we say goodbye to both of you, uh, how are you, a lot of people working on their gardens, building up their wildlife, you know, bringing the birds in in this time. What can we do to stop our dogs chasing them? Um, what I tend to do is... Um, if, yeah, because it is such a pain. But again, getting that, if they do do that in the garden, asking them to come and then giving them a, an alternative. So if you say come and then you give them a treat, then Distract that them. is the reward. Yes, it Distract has to them. Be brilliant. I'm going to have to let you both go. It's been so brilliant. I could talk to you both all day long. Thank you so much. That's Harriet Goodall, Director of Portastic Gundog Adventures, and Rachel Rogers, one to one dog trainer and behaviour consultant here on BBC Radio Kent. Such fantastic ideas. You're listening to Anna Louise.